Namaste, everyone, and welcome to the Monday Anchor the Light Meditation. So before we start, let's ask for blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, personally to my beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Twakok Sui, Maha Guji Mailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light, and soothing healing energy. We thank you in full faith. So it is. All right, so I hope all of you have a fantastic weekend. And today, let's talk about conflict. Conflict that happens, and um, whether you like it or not, everything doesn't go according to what we had in mind and planned. However, there's this is uh, ancient teachings that's quite powerful, and I want to introduce to you for the ones who R A Y S, race. And these seven rays essentially is, the teaching of the seven rays essentially is saying that there's particular frequency or energy that differentiates itself into seven different qualities. So the oversimplification of that is just imagine the energy from God is pure white light. Okay, it's not really white light. People like to say it's not really white light because light to our perception of this light. But light in the material world, compared to the astral world, mental world, and the spiritual world, uh, are not always the same. That's why some of you in meditation, you see very weird colors that you've never seen in the physical world. <clears throat> and when you explain it to someone, you go, I saw this light that was so bright, kind of crystalline, shiny, but metallic. Blah, blah, you run out of you run out of words. Okay? So don't get fixated. Oh, seven rays, seven colors. It's not. Just like the seven chakras, first of all, it's not accurate, it's not complete. And when people say, oh, the seven chakras are seven colors, uh, yeah, let's just say they need deeper study. <laughs> okay? Anyway, so these seven rays have different qualities. And the easiest way to understand it is you have seven types of souls, seven types of energy, seven temperaments, seven types of energies. Okay? That's, again, I apologize. That's the... Oversimplification. You want to study more, it's available online. Uh, if you want to know more about it from the business viewpoint, this is the book that I recommend. It's called, uh, if I can see it, all right, The Seven, no, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Achieve, the Impossible. Achieve the Impossible. It's written by my teacher. It's a compilation of the different talks he has. And on the last part of the book, it has um, spiritual business management, in other words, using spiritual principles to be successful in the material world. And that alone is uh, rare because most people think spirituality and materialism conflict. But in the case of Master Cho, he said, no, you actually use spiritual principles to make yourself super successful. Okay? So right here on page 65 is management by the seven rays. Today, I just want to focus on the fourth ray. Fourth ray is called, traditionally, harmony through conflict. And I think all of us have gone through it where there's conflict and after things explode, things calm down, things are actually better now than they used to be. I mean, that's, again, oversimplification. But let me just read to you directly what my teacher said. He said, The fourth ray manifests as harmonizing conflicting factors. In traditional esoteric teachings, the fourth ray is harmony through conflict. This is the external appearance. Okay? Essentially, what he's saying is, oftentimes when we see something that's conflicting, Oh, there's so much conflict, we're going crazy. But in reality, the, the skill is taking these seemingly conflicting factors and making it work together. Now, the obvious or the easiest way to, to demonstrate this is through music and art. Okay? Let's just use art as an example. I'm not an artist, I'm not a musician, but I understand the concept. Let's say you have watercolor or paint, and you got like 20 different colors, Somebody like me with no artistic skill, <laughs> I throw it on the, on the canvas, it's a pure mess. <laughs> it's chaos, right? Now, somebody like, some of you who are very artistic, you can take the same 20-some colors and make beautiful art out of it. It's the same seemingly conflicting things. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, magenta, or whatever. You have all these colors. Somebody with the right skill can harmonize these colors to come out with beautiful art. Make sense? Somebody like you with no artistic skill is just like, that's look like a big fat mess. 
Of course, if you sell it right, you could still make a lot of money. But anyway, that's beside the point because some of these art that you see, I'm going, uh, that's art? <laughs> anyway, who am I to judge? I don't know anything. Same thing with music. With music, what happens? You have seven notes. Let me see if I can remember. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, if I'm not mistaken. Okay? So you have these seven notes. Again, they're seemingly conflicting energies, sounds. So back to the example, somebody with more musical skills, I start pounding on the piano, guitar, or whatever musical instrument, it comes out as what? Noise. <laughs> right? But someone with skill, like a lot of you who are very artistic with piano, with whatever musical instrument, you can take those seven notes and make a concerto. Something that's pleasing to the ear, that would be uplifting, inspiring, it could be motivating, it could be calming. All of it is just simply harmonizing these different conflicting, seemingly conflicting energies and make it sound good. Well, guess what? It's the same skill that we can use in our everyday life. And that's what I want to get to is because the message just says it very clearly. Okay, again, some of you are asking, it's called Achieve the Impossible. Okay, you know, the little books that uh, compilation of my teacher's work. So, he says, watch this. Well, not what, listen. The sign of maturity of the soul is the ability to harmonize the different energies and the different factors. The maturity of the soul is reflected by the ability, the ability to work on different energies and harmonize them. Although... Conflict initially looks irritating and bothersome. It is actually an ingredient that is necessary for refining and fine-tuning the decision. The ability to see different aspects or angles of an issue and come out with a balanced solution that is effective and workable is a sign of great maturity. <laughs> right? It's just like you got 10 people with different opinions. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Okay, let's see how we're going to make this work. This guy wants a temperature at 72 degrees. This one wants temperature at 95. This one, you go, ah, seemingly conflicting, right? So if this is a go, okay, what, what are the things that people want? It's just like if you're a negotiator. In fact, negotiators have a strong four-three quality. It's like, what do you want? What do you want? What can you live with? What can you live with? What is, un what is negotiable? What's not negotiable? You just go, by the time you're done, somehow you're able to harmonize it and make people work together. Not very different than you have different notes and somehow, even though they seem conflicting, make it actually sound music to someone's ears. So this ab ability to harmonize conflicting factors is very, very important. If the government, <laughs> not just the US, but every government in the world, has a strong 4 3 quality, they can make seemingly opposing views work together for the good of the country. In the family, if there's conflict, if someone has a strong 4 3 quality, they can make mom and dad work together, mom and dad and children work together. You have a bunch of teenagers, you have, you know, different, you have millennials, you have Generation Z, Generation this and that, whatever, and everybody has their opposing views. You can go, okay, how can we all work together? That 4 3 quality is a sign of the maturity of the soul. And first step in that, you're going to hear this again, the ability to observe. Oftentimes, the reason we cannot observe is because we're swimming in the conflict. Isn't it? Think about it. The reason people have conflicts in their life and continue to have conflict is because they're swimming in the crap. That's what happens. But what if you can step back, you go, okay, this color, this color, this color, this color. If I put this color here, uh, that'll make it a good backdrop. If I put this color here, it'll stand out. If I put this color here, it will appeal to someone who is interested in spirituality, whatever. It's the ability to step back, observe, because without the ability to observe, there's no ability to be able to harmonize. So it goes back to the same boring thing you've been hearing me for the sake of who knows how long. You have to first realize you are the soul, the spiritual self. Everything is happening outside of you. And you have the ability to manipulate and control what you want to think, want to say, want to feel, want to act. If you just go by, well, I feel this, 
and that's all you look at, well, you hopefully what you're feeling is harmonizing, otherwise it creates problems. And that's one of the problems with artists. Sometimes they get so much into their art, they get so passionate about it, they fail to be able to observe. They say, this is what I want, this is what I'm passionate about. We we'll go, uh, okay, that's great and wonderful, but nobody wants it. So you have to kind of balance it. Okay, this is what I'm passionate about. I feel it, that's great. And then we will step back and observe. Hmm, how can I make this marketable so I can also make money? That's why you have a lot of starving artists. They're very passionate about their work, but somehow they're not able to step back and say, okay, this is great and wonderful. Um, is I going to pay my bills? Maybe I should have part of it be showing my passion, and part of it is let me create something to make some money so I can continue my passion. Sounds familiar? And when we say artists, you talk about um, Hollywood artists, Hollywood actors and actresses. Like, for example, you know the movie Top Gun? The first one, uh, Tom Skerritt, is, uh, and he's actually married to one of our students, uh, and a great guy. I've stayed with him before in Seattle, Washington. And I remember talking to him. I said, uh, Tom, so tell me a little bit about the acting career in Hollywood. He goes, very simple. Once you finish a movie, you're unemployed. I go, what? Yeah, after you finish a movie, you're unemployed. Unless you're somebody, you know, super duper famous, uh, you know, where you have things lined up for you. Everybody's basically after one movie, you're looking for the next one, to the next one. And so you're great at what you do, but at the same time, you'll be able to harmonize your art, your skill, as well as your bank account. And then he went through um, and explained it me, to me more. And I just want to paint a picture for you so you, you understand how many conflict, how that is done. I said, um, okay, can you show me what it's like to film a scene? He said, you could have a five minute. Okay, five minute scene in a car where two people are talking. And that thing could take three hours to film. I go, a five minute conversation, three hours? Are you kidding me? He said, no, 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 you don't realize. There's so many things happening. You have lighting, you have sound, you have, there's a plane going by. And, you know, the, the facial expression of each actor or actress. And then where they're talking. And most of you might think that they have their lines memorized. Um, according to what I was told, not all of them do. Some of them have to say, what am I supposed to say? That's why you have to see, watch his bloopers. You will say, blah, blah, blah. And it's like cracking up, even if it's a serious movie. It happens. So you have so many different moving parts that are seemingly conflicting. And in order for it to, to have a great five-minute scene, all the pieces have to fit together, harmonize as one continuous scene. And the way he explained it, it's like, let's say... You're supposed to feel a lot of anger. So the camera's on you. You have to crank it up to really make it believable. You're really pissed off. And then suddenly the director said, cut. Oh, your hair is off. That means your emotional body's going, yeah. <laughs> and then you might have to do 10 takes of that because you might do it right, but the other person giggled. Get the idea? So you have all these conflicting factors until, and then they keep doing it over and over until things harmonize. Now, guess what happened in relationships? <laughs> right? But hopefully, because of some conflict, things were resolved. So next time, things get better until the next conflict. So look at conflict as a readjustment. A readjustment. You want something in your life, it didn't work out, you're pissed off, you're angry, you go, wait, wait, wait. It's not because things are not good. It's a readjustment. That's why I love what Tony Robbins says. He said, God's delays are not God's denials. God's delays, he, he, he has great quotes, God's Delay, you know, delay, things take a little time. God delays, you're not getting what you want. Doesn't mean God said no. God's delays are, God, are not God's denials. So the delay means things are still working itself out. Make sense? Now, I know some of you are saying, well, but in science, there's this thing called entropy. Entropy is everything is going crazy. <laughs> you know, it goes always from structure to chaos. That might be in the material world. 
But in the spiritual world, it works the other direction. In the spiritual world, everything is evolving towards God, towards the light. Things that might be terrible, things might be difficult, might be painful. In the grand scheme of things, everything is leading up towards God. That's why it's called evolution. And let me, may I remind you, <coughs> you have the law of karma, you have the law of attraction, and you have the law of evolution. Every seed that any being plants will have a boomerang effect. Okay? Listen carefully. Any seed, when I say any seed, any cause that any being from a spiritual being, material being, that initiates this cause will have an effect. That's called the law of karma, not your opinion of karma. <laughs> so you don't believe in it, you're screwed. Okay? Let's just be direct with it. It is a law of karma, not your opinion of karma. So it is what it is. And then, as you plant that seed, the act of planting, because of the law of attraction, whatever you put in will have added energy by the, touch, by the time it touches the soil. And on its way back, because it's a boomerang, <laughs> it's going to come back, whether you like it or not, on its way back towards you, it also attracts similar frequency and vibration. So when it hits us, it always has an evolutionary process. If it's something stupid and dumb and hurtful that we did, when it hits us back, it's going to be painful. It is <laughs> basically how it works. Multiplied. You throw a little stone at someone, karmically hits you as a big boulder. <laughs> So in that case, you go, how could that be evolutionary? Uh, if you get hit enough times, you'll go, wait a minute, I'm seeing a pattern. <laughs> I'm seeing a pattern. Every time I throw something bad, it hits me harder. Hmm. Every time I throw something good, things get better. And it, you could be dense. But in a few lifetimes, all of us will eventually learn. Oh, so whatever I throw out, it'll hit me back, multiply it. Why didn't I figure it out 20 lifetimes ago? So if that's the case, uh, I'm not that dumb. So if I don't want something to hit me, then I don't throw it out. But if I want something to hit me, I want to throw it out more. Uh, you don't need uh, 20 volumes of spiritual teachings to tell you that. It's very simple. So because of that, the law of karma and the law of attraction work together. In the end, it has an evolutionary process with us. That's what you call harmony through conflicting instances or circumstances in our life. However, it's all based on how we respond to it. If you sit here and complain, oh, why does it always happen to me? Okay, you do that all day long, you're going to suffer more. You know why? Because you're delaying the effect of the law of evolution. Instead of saying, okay, there's some lesson I need to learn from here. What is the lesson to learn? If you approach it like, okay, let me observe. What pattern is this? What is the lesson to learn? If I look at it that way, then every conflict can be turned into something good for me. Yeah, but you don't understand. My life is into that. Look, I know this sounds cold, but I'll tell directly in your face. Whatever you're going through, I guarantee you there's at least 100 people have it worse than you have. True? So it's all about our response. There's going to be conflicting factors. The question is, what do you do about it? Do you harmonize it, make it work, or you sit there and complain and focus on one? You can sit there and go, man, you know, you got these 20 different colors. How come everything can't be red? How come everything can't be purple? How can I like my how come there's so many damn colors? <laughs> Is that what you're doing? You go, how come it's not this? It's because, hello, it's what you do with those colors. Or the seven notes, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, How come everything can be do? <laughs> it's like, I mean, that sounds ridiculous, right? But that's what people do. Why can't people, why can't things just be my way? Uh, hello, there are different factors involved. You have to look at all of them and make it work together. That's harmony through conflict. So let me repeat it again. 
It didn't come from me. The sign of maturity of the soul is the ability to harmonize the different energies, the different factors. The maturity of the soul is reflected by ability to work on different energies and harmonize them. Ability to see different aspects and angles of an issue come out with a balanced solution that is effective, workable, is a sign with great spiritual maturity. If you don't mind, I'll tell you straight. Throwing a spiritual tantrum does not show how advanced a soul is. Period. That's it. So when we meditate and do our spiritual practice, what happens? You get to step back, get to observe, and get to see, write this down, you get to see pattern. Okay? The ability to see patterns. That's the key. When you see patterns, you go, ah, oh, this pattern is this like, this person is very impulsive. This person is very patient. This person is very loving. And you start seeing, ah, oh, we have different people here. Okay, how do I make everybody work together? For the good of the company. Or for the good of the organization. That's harmonizing con seemingly conflicting factors. See, what people don't realize, conflict is all perception. It is all perception. Going back to the colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, whatever, you know, we have all these colors for the artists. They seem conflicting. Like this doesn't match this, this doesn't match this, you know, black doesn't go with this, this that goes, okay. The question is, how do you make it work to have a beautiful piece of art? Could you imagine how boring life would be if everything is red, everything is green, everything is purple? How do you create art? All these different colors, somehow you arrange it, somehow you're able to layer it, somehow you're able to change the shade, somehow you're able to put it in different positions. That's the skill of an artist. I'm sorry, that's the best I can do, I'm not an artist. Same thing with music. You know, you have all these keys and somehow they know how to use these things and pound the right keys and come out something that's pleasing to the ears. Of course, if I do it, it's gonna be, ah, you can do that. You know, the only instrument I play is iPad. Pew! I can press buttons. But here's the beautiful thing about this. When an artist sees, ah, these are all the different keys or these are these different colors and they'll be able to create this music or this art. Watch this. That same artist can take all the same raw materials and create another piece of art, another piece of music, and keep going, and keep going, and keep going. And another artist can watch it, listen to it, and to go, huh, oh, I can take all that different, seemingly conflicting frequencies and make it another piece of music. It's a matter of perspective. You might think everything in your life is exploding. You might think that, oh, you don't have the skills to do that. You don't have the money to do that. You don't have this. You don't have that. You're focusing on what you don't have rather than focusing on what you have and make it work for you. That's a lesson in harmony to conflict. When a person sees only how it doesn't work, that's what they're doing. They're focusing on how the colors won't work how the music doesn't work. So they're focusing on the mess, they're focusing on the noise. But another person with the right attitude would say, you know, I can make beautiful things out of this. Although, you know, if health is an issue, money is an issue, whatever your issue is, you can say, well, that might not be good, but I can make it work because I can focus on what does work. Again, that is impossible to do if you cannot step back and observe. If you just scream and yell, complain, and whine all day long, good luck. You're swimming so much in the mud, you don't have any raw material but mud. But if you can step out, you go, okay, enough of this. Let's see what's beautiful in life. What can I make beautiful in life? 
That's why I, I love it when uh, one, one of the things that Tony Robbins always starts in his events, like how to create a beautiful state. He starts with that now. At least he started about two years ago because, you know, sometimes people come in, they start complaining, well, I don't like it. How come we don't get bathroom breaks? How come, um, how come it's so cold in here? They keep focusing on negative. So at some point he goes, these people are not getting it. So he starts out with how to start, how to be in a beautiful state no matter what. You know what happened? People stop complaining. Because once you start complaining, somehow you'll go back to them. Okay, I'm complaining because I'm focusing on what's not rather than what is. Who are you? To the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. To my teacher, Master Tsok Hoksui, Mahaguji Meiling, we thank you for divine light, love, guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. So be it. By the way, before we do our meditation, I have an inside tip for you. One particular chakra is a key to the ability to harmonize conflict. It's not your armpit chakra, just to clarify. <laughs> it's the heart chakra. The next chakra to help you harmonize is the crown. This one sees the good in people, Love, kindness, joy, the crown sees it on a much wider scale. That's it. So that's why when we do meditation Twin Hearts on a regular basis, you start noticing you're kinder. You start noticing that um, you're more patient. You start noticing like, uh, things are not going my way, but it's okay. In the big scheme of things, everything also always works out. Clear? What did Tony Robbins say? Life is not happening to you. Life is happening for you. Take your left hand, tap your heart, take your right hand, tap your crown, put your hand like this. Be aware of your crown. I am that. I'm not the body, I'm not the emotion, not the thoughts. I am the soul that creates the feelings, the thoughts, and the actions of the body. I am the soul. I am that. Be still. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spark within me. I am a child of God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still and put your gentle awareness on your crown. We are one. Our hearts are one. Our souls are one. Our spirits are one. There's only oneness. Maintain your stillness and awareness. Open your hands in blessing. First, imagine people you love in front of you. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill them with beautiful pink light. Just say, from my heart to yours, I shower you with love and much affection with absolutely no expectations. Just fill them with love and care. So be it. Be aware of your crown in your hands. Fill them with beautiful golden light. You say, from my soul to yours, may you be blessed with inner peace and divine love. So be it. Now, Imagine the earth in front of you is the size of a little ball. Be aware of your heart, your hands, and fill the earth with pink light. And share the love you have with that person, with every person on earth. Just visualize the earth and all beings being flooded with pink light. We will use the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Wherever there is hatred anywhere in the world, anywhere, within me, in my home, my work, in the city I live in, the country, anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. 
May all who are suffering be blessed with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. Where there's darkness, let me sow light. Sadness, let me sow joy. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Fill the earth with beautiful pink light. Blessing every person, every being with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, with light and joy. So be it. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Inhale. Go to your crown. Exhale. And stay there. Our crowns are filled with so much golden light. Allow the golden light to just flow down from your crown through your hands and bless your family, your friends, people you live with, work with. Let the golden light just spread through the city, the country, and the entire world. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and peace. So be it. Fill the earth with beautiful golden light. Especially bless the country of Ukraine with peace, with divine order. So be it. May the people be blessed, be healed, and divinely protected. So be it. May all be blessed. With God, all is possible. May this war end now, so be it. May the suffering end now, so be it. Blessings be to all. Now be aware of your heart and your crown simultaneously. Take a deep breath. Exhale, imagine golden light even brighter than before pouring out of our hands, filling the entire earth. Just say we are one. Our hearts are one, our souls are one. There's only oneness. May all be blessed. From the center of the heart of God, through my spirit and through my soul, may every person, every being on earth, in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings, all sentient beings in every dimension, every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace and inner healing. And for so many right now, physical, emotional, mental, and even financial healing. May all be blessed with understanding, harmony. May all be blessed with goodwill and the willingness to do good. So be it. Blessings be to all. Blessings be to all. Be still. Just keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth and let the blessings flow through us. May all be blessed, so be it. Now, gently lower your hands. Keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Imagine a golden light above your crown. Just look at that golden light and listen. that light, allow your awareness to just drift into that light, 
You are that light. Be still. Be aware of that light and just simply let go. Now. Meditate on the inner peace, the inner stillness, and just simply let go and let things be. Just let things happen. Gently, slowly, gently and slowly come back to your body. Gently and slowly come back. Raise your hands. Visualize the earth in front of you. Just imagine the people you love in front of you. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with abundance and prosperity, and with spiritual light. So be it. Fill them with so much love and light, especially golden light. So be it. Now be aware of your feet and the base of your spine. Project golden light downwards into the earth. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it. Just fill the earth below you with golden light. So be it. Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. To my beloved teacher, Master Chokok Sri Mahagu Jumailing, thank you. In full faith, so be it. Okay, it's a short meditation. Uh, if you really let go, you would have experienced uh, an expansion because so much energy is flowing through. Why? Well, number one, we're, there's a lot of you meditating at the same time. The other thing is tomorrow, tomorrow morning, 4.50 a.m. California time is the peak of the full moon, which if you know, there's a three super powerful moons of the year. Uh, <laughs> Aries, Taurus, and then Gemini. That's tomorrow. So just as a reminder, uh, for some of you who are not aware of it, tomorrow morning we're having... Um, the meditation, California time at 4.30 a.m. to catch the peak of the full moon. And then also tomorrow afternoon for the ones who cannot, you know, because you work or, you know, side of the world, whatever. So you have two opportunities. The peak is the morning one. And as I always say, if you show up, I show up. I'll be here. Body won't get much sleep, but hey, we can sleep after. Okay? Uh, so tomorrow at... Um, eek. 4.30 a.m. is we start, so we'll have a short lecture on uh, the astrological science of Gemini, Libra, and Sagittarius. You've heard, some of you heard it before, this has to do with the sharpening of the mental faculty of the soul. Well, actually not the soul, the mental body, <laughs> okay? Uh, I think that's it. Tonight, or California time tonight, 7 hours and 19 minutes from now, it's Anchor Light Part 2. We hope to see you then. I'll see you then. Uh, you all take care, and I think that's it. Again, tomorrow, mark your calendars. Atma, Atma means soul. To all your Atmas, Namaste. Thank you very much for joining me, and we will see you in a few hours. Take good care.